Barbara, what happens next if Trump contests Pence's subpoena on executive privilege grounds? Will that claim hold, given that Pence detailed some conversations with Trump in his book? I think, Jonathan, that uh, Donald Trump could delay the testimony or production of documents by Mike Pence, but I don't think he will ultimately prevail in stopping him. Executive privilege belongs to one person, the president of the United States, and that person right now happens to be Joe Biden. So it is Joe Biden who gets to decide whether executive privilege should prevent Mike Pence from testifying. I don't imagine he uh, cares to do that. Donald Trump does have some residual executive privilege as the former president. He can make a recommendation to Joe, Joe Biden. But at the end of the day, it is the president's mm. duty to decide whether to assert executive privilege. In addition, Jonathan, even if President Biden were to assert executive privilege, it is only a qualified privilege. And so if DOJ were to litigate this in court, I believe they likely would win under the precedent of United States versus Nixon, where the Supreme Court held that when there is a stronger government interest, such as a grand jury investigation, then the executive privilege must yield. So it may take a bit of time to litigate mm. that and sort that out. But I think ultimately Mike Pence is going to have to testify. And, and Michael, Vice President Pence refused to testify before the January 6th committee. Does this impact whether he complies with the subpoena or could he become a presidential candidate flouting the rule of law? Well, I, I'm glad to be with both of you. It's good to see you, Barb. Um, I, I will tell you, there's probably nobody in the country more excited that Trump wants to fight the subpoena than, than Mike Pence. And that is because it gives him somebody to put the blame on to, for, for his delay uh, in, in testifying. Uh, I, I think he probably does not want to testify. He, he, there's clearly no way out of the grand jury subpoena uh, as it sits, and um, you know, it, it, as opposed to some of the congressional subpoenas that we saw go out and that were challenged. You don't have the same separation of powers issues and those types of things that are there. So um, I, I expect at the end of the day, he will testify. The, the case that we, we're talking about, the Nixon case, it, it really means that executive privilege can't be a shield to hide criminal conduct. You can't do things and uh, that are illegal and then try to get around it uh, by claiming executive privilege. So this, this, this shield is, is not going to hold for them um, at, at the end of the day. So I think uh, there will be some delays. I, I'm sure we've expected all that uh, all along as we've watched uh, these issues be litigated thoroughly. Uh, and this will just add to it. Uh, at the end mm -hmm. of the day, I think he'll find himself sitting in the grand jury room. So, so as Michael says, Barbara, and as you were saying, it, Mike Pence is going to delay. But listen to what Pence said downplaying Trump's culpability. I don't know if it is criminal to listen to bad advice from lawyers. Truth is, what, what the president uh, was repeating is what he was hearing uh, from that gaggle of attorneys around him. And, um, uh, you know, presidents, uh, just as like all of us that have served in public life, you have to rely on your team. You have to rely on the credibility of the people around you. Barbara, I'm sorry. Maybe... Given everything that we have learned through the January 6th hearings, how is that even, how is that even believable? Yeah, well, that's very much a political answer, Jonathan, and not a legal answer, what Mike Pence just said there. I don't know that he'll tell a different story when he goes to the grand jury, but, it, you know, it's really a conclusion as opposed to facts. And at the grand jury, what prosecutors are going to be asking are about facts. What did Donald Trump say to you? Not, you know, not an excuse for why he did what he did. Um, what were the conversations? Did you ever discuss false slates of electors? Uh, to what extent was Donald Trump pressuring you to thwart the count on January 6th? So those are the kinds of things. Mike Pence is a fact witness. He can make excuses all day about Donald Trump, but that's not going to matter because it's lawyers who are going to conclude whether those facts amount to a crime. And, Michael, in the documents case, Robert O'Brien was subpoenaed and Trump's lawyer testified to the grand jury. And on the new documents found, CNN reports, quote, a Trump aide had previously copied those same pages onto a thumb drive and laptop, not realizing they were classified. The laptop, which belonged to an aide who works for Save America PAC, and the thumb drive were also given to investigators in January. Michael, how serious is this? Is this a sign indictments are still possible in this case? You know, it's serious anytime that there are, are problems with uh, 
classified materials. And especially when these get downloaded, it can be accessed by other people and can cause real problems for national security. We don't know what these documents were, uh, but it is a problem. And it, it's particularly concerning to me that this aide who was working that close to the former president didn't recognize that these were classified documents. And it's also concerning to me that documents still remain at Mar-a-Lago uh, after an FBI search. <laughs> And I have some real right. questions about that. And so, you know, it it, it goes on. I, as far as the case itself, you know, the fact that we're finding documents both in the sitting president's home, which is, can you, it's hard to even believe that we're having the FBI search a sitting president's home, but we've got documents found in the sitting president's home that may have been there for some period of time in a former office. We've got documents in the former vice president's office, documents in the former president's office. And at some point, that sort of takes the sharp edge I think off the criminal case, it doesn't make the conduct less uh, problematic, but it makes the likelihood of a, a successful prosecution difficult. I, I, I want to say too, I was kind of chuckling and thinking about Mike Pence saying, if if listen to bad, to bad legal advice is a crime, there, there's probably not enough jails to hold folks in the former administration <laughs> case because uh, that's that seems to be the norm uh, as a, as opposed to something out of the norm. So it, it's it's yeah. uh, you know a new day and a different story. Barbara, I got to get your your reaction to the to the the, the, the idea that after Mar-a-Lago was searched by the FBI, that more classified documents were found, and not only were they found, they were found to have been copied onto an electronic device. Doesn't I, I'm sorry to Michael's point. This happened after an FBI search. Doesn't this raise the stakes for Trump and his legal team? I think so, Jonathan. And it's it's really appalling because Donald Trump most certainly knows that the government wants those documents back. He knew that back in August. He knew that 18 months earlier. And he most certainly knew it by January. But I think why this matters, Jonathan, is because when you look at the factors that prosecutors consider when deciding whether to file charges in cases involving mishandling of classified documents, usually mishandling alone is not enough, which is why I think most of us think that Joe Biden and Mike Pence are probably not in any legal trouble. What they look for instead are aggravating factors. Some of those aggravating factors look like they may already be present. One is willfulness, the refusal to return the documents. Another is obstruction of justice, lying about what you have, failing to comply with the grand jury subpoena. That could be obstruction. But there's a third one, and that is uh, storing them in such a way that they could be exposed to third parties unauthorized to receive them. If there's an aide from the Save America PAC who is now not only looking at but uploading classified documents, that's a third aggravating factor. Three strikes, you're out. I think that uh, this is just additional reason that the prosecutors might decide to file charges against Trump.